Welcome back everyone to the next character episode of the Blue Gender Retrospective. For this episode, we're going to talk about Tony Frost, the gifted but ultimately treacherous member of the Sleeper Brigade. First, let's ask, what does Tony do in the story? Now, Tony is introduced along with the rest of the Sleeper Brigade in episode 14. In this episode, we see him take part in some cool exercises where he proves to be an extremely skilled pilot and even outduels a partnered Yuji and Marlene. In the next episode, we see him perform his own mech maintenance, and this is his first real interaction with Yuji and therefore us. He proclaims not to trust the maintenance staff. He tells Yuji that there are two things that matter in life, that is not dying and to never trust anyone. This establishes Tony as a very aloof and isolated man, and does perk a little bit of curiosity as to what his viewpoint is, what his motives are, who this guy really is. Anyways, as the series progresses, Tony takes part in the first drop mission in and around Tanzania, where he proves to be brutally effective against the blue, but also extremely arrogant and weird. He disregards detailed orders many times and leaves his mech for a bit to personally pick up a blue egg. In these missions, he also forms his adversarial rivalry with Yuji, although this isn't quite fleshed out enough to really impact the viewer, or at least not in my case. While Yuji seems to look up to Tony as a great warrior, and this continuously pushes Yuji to feed into his own bloodthirst and blue cell instincts, Tony doesn't really seem to care for his respect or anything really. He just kind of comes off as unpleasant and distant. Anyways, in the second less successful drop mission in New York, Tony again goes rogue, Although this time he doesn't destroy the blue nest from within, but instead drags Alicia into it and convinces her to betray all the humans. This sees him bring up a horde of blue aboard the medical station and proceed to basically wreck it. He does this because his combat missions have awakened his inner blue cells, his inner B cells, to the point where he quote, realizes his true destiny. According to Tony, since the blue are Earth's manifestations of B cells, and he, as a sleeper, also has B cells, that he and the blue are actually on the same side, and therefore should carry out what he calls the grand will of destroying humanity. Since he sees himself as the most intelligent wielder of B-cells, I mean, he is obviously smarter than the blue, and, you know, he's pretty arrogant, so he does consider himself smarter than his fellow humans. In his view now, it falls to him to lead this sort of new awakening, according to him. In accordance with this, he sees himself as a new messiah, a heralder of a new age, one free of humanity. He takes over the medical station, as mentioned, and plans to ram it into the military station to carry this out, although he is prevented from killing everyone when Yuji fatally wounds him, and uh, the medical station is successfully blown up. As Tony lies dying, the same Alicia that he convinced to go along with him walks into the room and instead of saving him, simply says it's not their time and holds him as the station explodes. Now, Tony's character is a very odd one to look at, as it does do some extremely important things from a logistical viewpoint, although it isn't quite fleshed out enough or present enough to feel quite like a main character. Tony's just kind of in the background a lot of the time, and feels a bit unlikable, although this is probably intentional. The show doesn't quite know how to handle Tony, and what path to take him down. On one hand, it wants us to hold him in high regard, and says that he and Yuji have some kind of great rivalry and perhaps friendship but very of little of this is conveyed strongly enough and leads to a weird characterization, as it seems they want us to think they're friends, but don't really show it. Meanwhile, while this is happening, the show also implies that Tony's a sinister man with ulterior motives, which does prove to be true. Tony's presence is kind of all over the place after all, and I'd go as far as to say that he does feel like he has quite a bit of wasted potential. Though, that's not to say we can't learn anything from him, which we can, and we're going to get to that. I do think that his character is more impactful than I initially believed, and I've learned to not completely hate it. Now, while I've approached characters who lack characterization before, Tony's is especially a standout to me simply for how underutilized it is, especially compared to how many important actions it takes. In fact, sometimes the only reason we remember Tony's even a member of the cast is because of how Yuji fawns over him, and although he's in the exact same number of episodes as Alicia, his presence is nowhere near as fleshed out as hers. While Alicia has a defined character, a defined arc, a defined personality, a defined person, Tony doesn't really, and this is kind of the fault of the writing and how it tries to tackle his character from two very different angles. On one side, Tony is supposed to be Yuji's great rival and later friend. But on the other side, and simultaneously, he's also shown to be very nefarious and that he's always scheming, it seems. These do not reconcile well and kind of cancel each other out. As a result, Tony isn't very characterized and just feels like a kind of causal means to thing. 
In short, his character feels more like a plot device than a person. He isn't the guy that betrays Second Earth, but the reason the medical station blows up. He isn't Yuji's great friend, but simply the thing that pushes him to go further. I mean, he does have some character and personality, which I have come to pick up on, although it's not the most fleshed out, and due to the two approaches taken, it's also kind of contradictory. Now, it's obvious that Tony's main purpose is to be a sort of competitive and later tragic rival of Yuji, who, while fighting the good fight, falls to his own inner demons and betrays the team in a sort of tragic fall from grace. Now, while this is a perfectly fine plot thread and has been done very well many times before in many stories, the execution here is somewhat suspect. From a purely logistical standpoint, it's very competent. Tony does do these things. He establishes himself as a great warrior, as a great creep, and later as the guy that does try to kill everyone. From a logistical perspective, all the boxes are checked off. However, from a writing and characterization standpoint, Tony's character suffers from both a lack of screen time and interpersonal interactions. These two factors mean that we never really get to know Tony before his fall from grace, and therefore don't really care about him at all. Sure, his betrayal creates some shock value, but it lacks the emotional punch that a betrayal of this magnitude is probably supposed to garnish. What is supposed to be an emotional climax of his character, and definitely an emotional moment for Yuji, falls flat and even comes off as a little artificial because of how weak a connection we have to Tony. As a viewer with few endearing interactions with Tony, I don't really feel any inner conflict when he has to fight Yuji. I don't really even feel bad for either of them, as it's pretty obvious that Tony was never really his friend from the start. For a betrayal to have the biggest emotional impact possible, a close bond is needed. And that simply isn't here, even if it's bluntly stated to exist. In fact, Yuji's whole idealization and respect of Tony just kind of feels really forced and arbitrary, since Tony is just so boring and uninvolved. Okay, okay. So is Tony supposed to be the creepy weirdo then? And lean into his lack of emotions? I would think so, and I think this would be a really good approach actually, though it's hard to tell again. I think that it would have been a fine direction for that character to go in, as it is obvious from the start that he's kind of weird and probably nefarious. So if just feeding into his psychopathic tendencies, which they do later, could have actually been really cool and worked really well. While the egg scenes are weird and his hugging a dead blue is weirder, I think more scenes like this could have actually saved his character and I would have appreciated more of them. As while his nefarious nature was obvious, his betrayal wasn't quite obvious. As such, I think that the show should have either leaned into making Tony obviously evil or obviously good, and then slowly bled from one side into the other. He should have either been a completely joking and fun rival to Yuji, or a complete psychopath from the start. I mean, there are other approaches that could have been taken and would have worked. What I'm saying, though, is that by splitting Tony's character by taking two very different approaches at the same time, neither succeeds. In fact, it just feels like a sort of weird middle path is attempted, and as a result, to quote the immortal Mr. Plinkett, he just kind of comes off as a creepy, boring weirdo. The fact that I kind of disliked his character from the start, though, is perhaps intentional. Perhaps there is a reason his character is like this. Now, Tony's character is the first to fall to its own B-cells. That is, the first to fall to its own animalistic and base urges. Perhaps this lack of humanity is an intention of the character. And as I rewatched some more of the series in order to kind of refresh myself about his character, it did feel more natural and I learned to not hate it. While it is true that his bizarre writing, his lack of interactions with others, and his general cold demeanor do make him kind of a boring and unlikable character, there are people like that in real life. And again, perhaps this is intentional. His lack of humanity is actually his most defining trait. And his character and its arc does present the dangers of throwing out one's own humanity and how a culture of violence can dehumanize those who take part of it or are around it. As mentioned in the previous video about the council and the military command, there is a culture of militarism present and violence present, and said culture probably did at some point negatively impact Tony. While his character does suffer from a lack of a true backstory or any real moments to define him, it is obvious that he is not necessarily in the best mental state. Now I'm saying this because no one just goes crazy overnight. No value is placed on him other than his military value, and it seems that with this beginning of the dehumanization process, it's all been downhill from there. In his first battles with the blue, he shows very violent tendencies. He seems to enjoy nothing except violence. In his later battles with the blues, he's enjoyed violence so much that he's in fact become the main arbiter of it against those who are not his enemies. Perhaps if any care was given to his humanity or the mental health of the sleepers in general, Tony could have been saved. If perhaps some caution was taken and actual value placed on who he was as a person, none of this would have happened. He never would have gone down the path he chose had he been valued and 
meaningfully interacted with. Perhaps if some value was assigned to his humanity, he wouldn't have been dehumanized to a point where he renounced his humanity and humanity as a whole. As Tony goes on to glorify death and destruction, he becomes a sort of false and nihilistic savior. He goes on to embrace the negative aspects of humanity that have kind of led him to betray his own humanity, as they have become all he knows. I guess it's appropriate that someone so out of touch with everyone would go on to try and destroy everyone. In this way, Tony does serve as a great foil to Yuji. While their rivalry and relationship are not flushed out significantly, they are still relatively good foils. Where Yuji is the main character, who doesn't seem to know this and just is basically some guy trying to survive, Tony claims to be the main character, but isn't. He's just a side character who does his own weird stuff in the background. While Yuji still is still in touch with his humanity and humanizes those around them, lifting them up in order to embrace life and something other than the war, Tony dehumanizes those around him and only seeks to carry out the violence which he seems to revel in so much. Yuji reaffirms and reclaims humanity, while Tony has completely cast his off. In this way, it does make sense that Tony's presence is detrimental to those around him, as he seems to be a sort of miasma that, while subtle at first, later seeps in and ruins those around him. We see this most prominently with Alicia, who he kind of just brainwashes into becoming his second-in-command, although we do see this with other characters as well, such as when he eggs Yuji on to be more violent towards the blue, or when he scolds those around him or talks down to them. His general misanthropy just shows how easy it is to both catch and spread disdain for others, and how this can really poison a group from within. How sometimes the worst can indeed drag down the best. From both the point of view of his writing and his character arc, Tony very much is a cautionary tale about the loss or lack of humanity.